Hello and welcome back to the channel. So if it's your first time here, my name's Andrew and today I'm going to be looking at what happens if the DJI drones are banned and whether or not the Hover X1 Pro or Pro Max could be a viable alternative. So DJI drones have been under increasing scrutiny worldwide recently and some governments have raised concerns about data protection, supply chain issues and even national security. So in some regions, DJI imports have already faced delays and restrictions. So this means if you do rely on DJI, you could run into problems, including software updates, getting parts, or even getting the drone itself. And this is where the Hover Pro or Pro Max could come in handy. So first of all, it's not a backup, it could be a solid alternative to DJI. And I want to make it clear from the start is that I'm not sponsored by anybody. I bought the DJI Mini 5 Pro myself on Amazon, and I also bought the Hover X1 Pro Max myself when it initially came out uh, last December-ish time on Indiegogo. So neither of the drones are sponsored by anybody. This is purely my own opinion on both drones. So it's not gonna be about which drone is gonna be best overall, because that's gonna be down to yourself and your personal preferences and what you intend to use the drone for. Now there are a number of reasons why the Hover X1 Pro and Pro Max could be a viable alternative to the DJI Mini series. Now we're not comparing apples with apples, I know that, but it's exactly these differences that make this matchup more interesting. So I look at the key specs of each drone and how they affect you in real life and go through the specs with you. Now each drone does have its own strengths and weaknesses, but ultimately it's all going to be subjective and boiled down to what exactly you want to use the drone for. So first of all, I'm going to cover the Hover X1 Pro and Pro Max. So there's less regulatory risk. So you're not going to face the same issues you're going to get with DJI, with a drone being stopped at custom or software updates being blocked. Also future-proofing your workflow if the DJI ban goes on longer, whereas with the hover drones you haven't got that issue at the moment. Now the features of both drones are quite competitive. They're both going to shoot in 4K at a maximum of 120 frames per second, but on the DJI Pro Max you're also going to get 8K at 30 frames a second. Now you've also got to look at portability. Both drones do fold up quite small, but the Hover X1 Pro Max has the advantage over that. And also it comes in lighter at 200 grams as opposed to the DJI Mini 5 Pro's 250 grams. Now this could cause an issue in the future because there are a few countries which are looking at the current C0 classification of the Mini 5 Pro and saying that it's over the 250 limit, so it could be classed as a C1 drone. But this at the moment is still up in the air as not everybody's decided what they're doing. You also got to consider sensor size. Now with this, the DJI Mini 5 Pro wins because you've got a one inch sensor as opposed to the Hover X1 Pro and Pro Max's one over 1.3 CMOS sensor. So you're going to get better low light capability in the DJI Mini 5. Also with the Hover X1 Pro and Pro Max, you've got the ability just to unfold it, select the tracking mode you want, throw the drone in the air and you're way to go. There's no messing about with controllers like you've got with the DJI Mini 5 Pro. Now on top of that, you've also got the voice activation feature where you can tell the drone what quick maneuver you want it to make and it will do that maneuver, but admittedly it's within limitations. But there are some ways in which the Hover X1 and Pro and Pro Max do fall down compared to the DJI Mini 5. So now you've got flight time. The Hover X1 Pro and Pro Max comes in at 16 minutes per battery, but that's gonna be enough if you wanna do some shorts or just follow mode in good conditions, but it is gonna limit your flexibility if you're doing some extended aerial photography. Whereas the DJI Mini 5 comes in at over double that at 36 minutes flight time per battery. So that is a trade-off between the two drones with the DJI Mini 5 Pro winning hands down. Now we've got obstacle avoidance. Now the DJI Mini 5 Pro does have 360 degree obstacle avoidance, plus you've got the LiDAR sensors on the front of the drone for when you're flying at night time. Whereas the Hover X1 Pro and Pro Max only has obstacle detection sensors, not avoidance. So this means the drone is only going to stop when it detects an object, and that's going to be limited to between three and a half and five and a half miles an hour when the drone is traveling backwards. Anything over that speed runs the potential of the drone crashing. So when it comes to obstacle avoidance, the DJI Mini 5 Pro does come ahead of the Hover X1 Pro and Pro Max. Now, as I said earlier, the Pro Max is capable of shooting in 8K, and although that sounds great, the performance in low light isn't as good as the Mini 5 Pro. And I will be honest with you, in the 10 months that I've had the Hover X1 Pro Max, I've yet to use the 8K feature. I've always just filmed in 4K. Okay, so I've come home for this bit, and this is the part where I say I'm not sponsored by anyone. So if you could do the like and subscribe and the notification bell, that would be great. Try and get me over the 1,000 subscribers. And I'd also like to say thank you to one of the subscribers, which is Imali Drone Lab, who's used my Buy Me A Coffee link down 
in the description below to help sponsor the site. So what my plan is, if any of you do fancy buying me a coffee, any funds I get from that, I'm going to put towards the new um, anti-gravity drone, which is coming out in January, I believe, to try and do some reviews and everything on that. Obviously, I can't afford to buy all the drones uh, each, each time something comes out because I'm not sponsored. So this is why I'm including links like buy me a coffee. OK, so I'll crack on with the video. When it comes to ease of use, I do find that the Pro Max is a lot easier to use than the DJI Mini 5 Pro. And I will use the Pro Max in situations where I would never think of using the Mini 5 Pro. So with the Hover X1 Pro and Pro Max, operation is really simple. It's just a matter of unfolding the drone, switching it on and selecting the flight mode parameters you want on the drone and you're to go. It literally takes a minute or two to go. But it's a different case with the Mini 5 Pro. Because obviously with the Mini 5 Pro, you've got to use it with a controller. So that means you've got to get the drone set up. You've got to get the controller set up. It's even worse if you're using the phone with it. And then you've got to do all the settings via the controller for the drone to actually activate, even if you just want to do a simple orbit or zoom out shot. Whereas with the Harvard X1, you just open it up, switch it on, select the mode and you're way to go. So for me, the Hover X1 does win in this area because you can be up and flying a lot quicker than you can using the Mini 5 Pro. So if you are someone who's just a casual creator doing some vlogging or you want some simple, reliable aerial footage, then the Hover X1 Pro or Pro Max is the way to go. So it's going to give you autonomy, portability, high res footage, and also peace of mind that the regulations are not going to suddenly change and you're not going to be stuck with a drone that you can't use or can't even get hold of. So the Hover X1 Pro and Pro Max are designed basically as a flying camera. So you don't have to be a seasoned pilot to use it. So with the Hover X1 Pro and Pro Max, you've got a 1 over 1.3 CMOS sensor, which is capable of 48 megapixel stills. You've got 8K at 30 frames a second and 4K at 120 frames a second, a 16 minute battery life, the weight of 193 grams. You've also got the obstacle avoidance of rear collision sensors and a claim transmission rate of one kilometer. Whereas the Mini 5 Pro is going to be aimed at more professional creators who want more control, excellent image quality, and it's all wrapped up in a sub 250 gram drone. So as I said earlier, when it comes to battery life, the Hover X1 Pro and Pro Max is only going to give you 60 minutes worth of filming. But the Mini 5 Pro will give you up to 36 minutes, which is double that of the Hover X1 Pro and Pro Max. So this means you can film for extended periods without having to have the drone return to you to change the batteries. Now, when it comes to wind resistance and stabilization, they're both quite similar, especially in calm conditions. And what I found in windier conditions, the Pro Max will tend to move about a lot more than the DJI Mini 5 Pro. And also the Pro Max only has a two axle gimbal, whereas the Mini 5 Pro has a three axle gimbal. So it does give you better stabilization overall. And when it comes to image and video quality in bright daylight, they both offer excellent footage at 4K. Now, because the Mini 5 Pro does have a one inch sensor in low light situations, it does far exceed the capability of the Hover X1 Pro and Pro Max. Now, the Mini 5 Pro does have the ability to rotate the gimbal, so you will get true vertical filming, something you're not going to get on the Hover X1 Pro or Pro Max. Now, both drones offer various tracking and automated flight modes, and some of these are similar across the drones, for example, circle or zoom out or rocket, that type of thing. But the difference between the two is the simplicity. Now, to do a simple track on the Mini 5 Pro means you've got to get the drone out, you've got to get your controller out, set your phone up, go into the app, select the subject and then select the automated mode that you want, launch the drone and then get it to follow you. So for me, the hover shines when it comes to simplicity because you just open the drone up, select the mode you want to use and you're way to go. You haven't got to do all the paraphernalia you've got to do with the DJI Mini 5 Pro. But saying that, you've also got a number of features on the Mini 5 Pro, which does make it stand out against the Hover Pro and Pro Max. You've got things like waypoints, you've also got things like hyperlapses, and you've also got cruise control. And a lot of these can greatly improve your footage when you are out filming with the drone. Now, having both drones, there are conditions where I would prefer to use one drone over the other. So for me, I'm down the beach, it is quite windy, so I would tend to use my DJI Mini 5 Pro over my Pro Max because I find that the stabilisation is better in stronger winds. But if I'm out mountain biking, I would use my Pro Max, and that's because there's less for me to carry because I don't need a controller, it's easier for me to deploy, it's better tracking when it comes to things like mountain biking because it's got a dedicated cycling mode. So again, like I said, it depends on the situation I'm in, which drone I would tend to use. So also when you're using the hover, you've got less things to worry about. So it's a shallower learning curve as opposed to the DJI Mini 5 Pro, where the learning curve can be quite steep. 
So I'm just going to sum everything up on who I think each drone is going to be aimed at. So if you're someone who's looking for a camera for simple flying without the need for any extensive piloting skills, if you're looking for just social media type of things for vlogging and simple shots, or if you don't want to have anything complicated, you want to prioritise and you're not too bothered about shooting in low light conditions and you want to travel as light as possible, then the Hover X1 Pro and Pro Max are going to be ideal for you. And this is the point where I say I'm not sponsored, so if you could do the like and subscribe thing, that would be great. Try and get me over the 1,000 subscribers. There are new drones coming out at the moment, I can't afford to buy them, so any help me eventually getting monetized by uh, YouTube would be greatly appreciated. Whereas, if you want to do more complex shots with better image quality, especially in low light uh, conditions, and you want to be more cinematic and have more control over what you're actually filming, then the DJI Mini 5 is going to be the best option. So when it comes to the strength and weaknesses of the Hover X1 Pro and Pro Max, you've got the simplicity of operation. So it's great for beginners who don't want anything complex when they're out flying. It's compact, it's lightweight. It gives you 8K video if you've got the Pro Max. It's also going to give you a good tracking for things like doing shorts and selfies, that type of thing. And there's also fewer controls, so there's less things to worry about. It is just a matter of launch and shoot. But the weaknesses are you've got a shorter battery length, so you're not going to get as much filming in. Now, it's going to be less robust in challenging situations like high winds. And also, because you haven't got obstacle avoidance, where you fly the drone safely could be a bit more limited. So this means that you may feel more constrained when you're out to fly in the drone itself. And when it comes to flying my Hover X1, I do tend just to keep it quite local and I'll use it more for things like quick shots or follow me on my mountain bike. I wouldn't tend to use it if I wanted to do big aerial shots or fly the drone half a mile down the beach. For that, I would stick to using my Mini 5 Pro. And when it comes to the Mini 5 Pro, it does have a lot of strengths in its favour as well. First of all, you've got the one inch sensor. Now that means you're going to get a superior image quality, especially in tough lighting situations or in low light. You've also got better obstacle avoidance sensors with the 360 degree and the LiDAR sensors. So on top of that, you've got a longer flight time, plus it is more stable in challenging conditions like higher winds. So situations where I use my Mini 5 Pro is if I'm filming big aerial scenes, for example, I want to shoot down the beach or I want to shoot over the industrial zones, then the Mini 5 Pro is perfect. Now for me, I wouldn't take it to things like mountain biking because although it's got the 360 degree uh, obstacle avoidance, I don't think the sensors are good enough to be able to detect the smaller branches. Whereas the Hover X1 Pro doesn't have the same level of sensors, but it does have a better tracking capability, especially with the cycling mode, because it does tend to follow me better through tighter environments when I'm going through trees and woods and that type of thing. So on the Mini 5 Pro, you've got a one inch sensor. You've also got 4K up to 120 frames per second. Different color profiles, including D-Log M. You've also got 36 minutes battery time. The weight is 250 grams. You've also got 360 degree obstacle detection along with LiDAR. And you've also got the transmission rate of up to 20 kilometers. Also on the Mini 5 Pro, you've got the new rotational gimbal of up to 225 degrees. So that can give you some unique footage when you are out and recording. First of all, it's heavier, and you've also got to carry the additional batteries and the controller with it to make the most of the drone. Also, the learning curve for the drone is going to be steeper. And although you've got the quick shot modes on the Mini 5, they're not as frictionless as they are on the Hover X1 Pro or Pro Max. So if you are doing just simple vlogging, or you want something which is easy to deploy and gives you great shots, then the Hover X1 Pro Max is the way to go. Okay, so that about sums it up. I would be interested in knowing which drone you currently have or if you're interested in purchasing any of the other drones. I'm not going to do any affiliate links because I haven't got that because, like I said, I'm not sponsored. So it's just a pure matter of interest of which drones people use. If you found it useful, please do the like, subscribe and the notification bell. If you've got any questions in relation to the DJI Neo, the Mini 4, the Mini 5, the Hover X1 Pro or Pro Max, let me know in the comments below. If there's anything you want to see in relation to any of these drones, also let me know. And I'll catch you again next time. Thanks very much. Bye.